I think a good student is one that has a real passion and enthusiasm for physics. I find that when I uh, interview prospective students during the open days and on UCAS days, one of the questions I like to ask is whether they've come across something recently that they've seen on TV or on the internet or read about in a book that they found really interesting and that they'd like to find out more about when they come to university. And I find that that leads into a really interesting discussion where they tell me what they know, what they don't know, what they'd like to find out about, and we can have a really good creative discussion about physics. And I find that that reveals an awful lot about the student and what drives them. I think there's no better reason for studying physics than that you're truly interested in the way that the world and the universe works on a deep level. Of course, backing this up, you need to have some underlying ability. It would be good if you had some aptitude in maths, and also some intuition about the way the world works. Something that I think is overlooked sometimes in physics is the fact that it can be a very creative subject. Some people think that it's quite algorithmic, that you follow through the steps and solve some equations and come up with a solution, but the very best students are ones who are prepared to be a little bit creative. Maybe try something wacky. Most of the time it won't come off, but every now and then it might just come off and then it will reveal something deep and interesting about the world. Well, I was very pleased when I arrived in Leeds to find out what a, an extremely nice bunch of students we, we have. Um, and it's, it's a pleasure to interact with them, uh, both as people, but also to, to see them develop. And I see a real genuine enthusiasm in them when they start to see connections. For instance, uh, dust grains or nanoparticles are important for the production of chemicals in the interstellar medium and also in protoplanetary disk. And a lot of the sorts of particles that we're interested in are not very different from the types of particles in which people in the molecular nanoscale physics group are interested. And to study the chemistry that's going on in there, you really need the techniques that come from a condensed matter group. And students, when they come here, start to learn about all these wonderful connections between physics and the types of physics that we do, and they're very excited about that, and it's extremely gratifying for me to see that type of reaction in a student. So experimental physics is a really important part of doing the course here at Leeds. In our first two years, our students uh, learn how to do um, some standard experiments in the undergraduate lab. So this is really about learning how to do measurements, take data, how to handle uncertainties in measurements, and get familiarised with some of the more standard pieces of laboratory equipment. We also give our students the chance to do some really good classic experiments. So one example that I like to give is the Millikan's oil drop experiment. So this was the experiment that proved that the charge on an electron is quantised. And we have some setups in, in our first year lab that let our students actually reproduce this experiment. But of course, we don't need our students to go and do this experiment to tell us that the charge on an electron is quantized at about minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. We know this. But the point of the first two years of lab is to get used to doing the experiments, to be able to understand when data is good and when it isn't. In the third year, our students are going on to do the four-year MPhys courses have an opportunity to go and do an advanced lab course. This is where we get the students into the research labs and get them playing with real research grade equipment. And this is very much a preparation for the final year projects when the students will be working on the research lab equipment. So here we're trying to teach much more about the experimental techniques and about understanding when a piece of equipment is giving you good data and when it's giving you bad data. And when you have to go and think, well, actually, this doesn't make any sense. So we try and teach some of the, the te techniques that we actually use in the real research equipment. So for example, one of the things we teach is a magneto-optical Kerr effect. This is a way of measuring the properties of magnetic films using a laser. And so we have our students build a laser system up, assemble all the components, do all the alignments of it, and then measure some standard samples. Um, and this lets them actually see how the real research grade equipment is put together and how we actually would do the experiment. And the setup we use for the advanced lab is in fact just a slightly simpler version of an experiment that students use in their final year projects and that we use all the time as part of our research. I think the appealing things for me about students are their independence and their enthusiasm. And I think 
when you go to university, you, you go through this threshold where no longer people tell you what to do, but you have to decide exactly how to structure your work and what to do. And I think that independence becomes very important, but also uh, it's enthusiasm that really, that really appeals to me. And so students that enthusiastically embrace what you teach them and what you tell them about is, uh, is a big plus for me. I really love teaching. I came into academia because I enjoyed research and I was wanting to contribute maybe in some small way to the, the frontiers of knowledge in, in physics. But I've discovered as I've gone on that I've really enjoyed teaching too. And I think that the two areas complement each other very well. Very often in my lectures I'll use examples from my own research to illustrate a point or to set a problem. And I also find it works the other way. Quite often when I'm writing a new lecture course I'll come across an idea that perhaps I haven't seen for many years or perhaps have never seen before that might inspire some idea in my research. I think the thing I enjoy most about teaching is the interaction with the students. I find that students at Leeds are incredibly enthusiastic and positive and I really, I really like the interaction with them. I find that at the end of lectures I often am surrounded by a bunch of students asking lots of questions we usually overrun and the next class is trying to come in, so we'll go back to my office and we'll often carry on the discussion in my office about some of the points that have come up in lectures. Two areas I particularly enjoy when I teach are the tutorials that we run, because this is an opportunity for me to sit with a small bunch, maybe three or four students, and have a really in-depth discussion about physics. And I find quite often they give me lots of interesting ideas as well as me giving them interesting ideas, so I very much enjoy that. The other area that I enjoy are the projects. So at the end of each degree in the final year, every student gets a chance to do a research project where they become a fully fledged member of a research group and do some original research. And this is an area I find very interesting because I get to work very closely with the student and it's not about teaching, it's about learning together. Together we try and uncover something new about physics and um, I find that one of the most rewarding experiences in teaching at Leeds. So a very important part of studying physics is doing experimental research work. And so in our final year, all our students come and do a research project with us. And so in condensed matter physics, our students come and do experiments on the real research equipment that we're using with our PhD students and with our postdoctoral researchers as well. So that means they're growing thin films of different materials, they're then uh, cooling them down in the cryostats and measuring their electrical properties as we've cool, cooled them down. Um, this really gets them a chance to, to get a good chunk of work going on that's, that's where we don't really know what's going to happen. We're doing new research here. So uh, we're never quite sure what the result is going to be from the projects, but it's always very interesting. We're very intent on getting students involved in research as, as quickly as we can. And one of the ways that we do this is, is that we offer uh, summer placements in research groups. Those uh, can start after the second year, and some people do it both after the second year and third year if they're doing a four-year degree. Uh, and it gives them an opportunity to, to do real research. And in fact, the students, when they are doing research with us, both as summer placement students and as uh, as project students during the academic year in, in astronomy that they have a, an office area that's right next to the offices that the postgraduate students have and those are right next to where the uh, academic staff are and the students become a real part of our research group. Now that happens in the other groups too but it might be that the, the students wind up in the lab in a real research lab but we integrate our undergraduate research project students into our academic groups are a real part of it. 